Round here, them guns get the last word. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So this video originally started off with me doing a sort of tier list to try and figure out which characters are most likely to show up in Mortal Kombat 12. But about halfway through the video, I sort of realized that that's a lot more difficult to talk about than it may seem. The way that Mortal Kombat 11 ended is quite bizarre and I think it's it sets up so many different possibilities and a tier list like this just cannot fully explain it because if you see this tier list it looks kind of weird like I have a lot of characters just splattered all over the place and what I started to do about halfway through was I realized that Mortal Kombat 11 ended a thousand years before a lot of these characters were still alive so it's very hard to say if a character like Devorah will be in the game because Mortal Kombat 11, Mortal Kombat 12 will pick up a thousand years before this character was even relevant. Same with like Cabal and you know the Cyberlin Quay. Now the thing about Scorpion and Sub-Zero, I think the movie touched on this as well. They have their clans which probably spans back a thousand years and I think it would be really cool to see the peaks of both of their clans, how powerful both of their clans were. So I have no, um, everything that I will say in this video will exclude those two because I think their clans and their heritage uh, will be represented in some way, shape or form. But really all of these other characters in here are like the question mark. In order to explain what I mean to you guys, I have a news article here that gives us a general breakdown of what happened at the end of Mortal Kombat 11. Now there's two endings. The first ending, which is not canon, which a lot of us believes is not canon. You have Shang Tsung, which uh, he's sitting on top of this throne and he's basically talking to Raiden and Fujin and he's telling them to basically kill anyone who's not agreeing with him. Shang Tsung wants complete total control of everything and anyone who disagrees with that, anyone who's not falling in line, Raiden and Fujin and possibly the other gods and whoever else will you know, eliminate them. In what everyone believes is the canonical ending, just because of how much more effort and more uh, thought went into it, we think this is the, ca the canon ending of the two. It says, players who select Liu Kang will assume control of him and defeat Shang Tsung. Following the battle, Liu Kang begins the timeline restart. This cinematic begins with Liu Kang visiting the Great Kung Lao in the Shaolin Temple. Now, the Great Kung Lao is different from his cousin Kung Lao. The cousin, you know how in cutscenes and in the story and in the movie, Kung Lao is like, I am the descendant of the great Kung Lao and you will not beat me. You know, whatever he says. When he says, I am the descendant of the great Kung Lao, this person is who he's talking about. So it's very important to understand who Liu Kang is actually visiting here. This is not his cousin. This is, his, this is the great Kung Lao from a thousand years before he introduces himself as Lord Liu Kang, God of Fire and Thunder, and tells Great Kung Lao that he has been chosen as a champion and will need to undergo training. Now it goes on to say the second paragraph I want to read. This ending seems to be what Netherrealm will be using as its canonical ending going forward with the series, and for good reason. It sets the stage to restart the series and reverse all the events of Mortal Kombat 9, 10, and 11, and possibly even the prior games. This takes place prior to the first Mortal Kombat tournament and Liu Kang's insistence on training alludes to Kung Lao participating in the tournament at some point in the future. This would set the stage for Mortal Kombat 12 to take place during one of the first Mortal Kombat tournaments and feature the ancestors of the mainstays in the series like Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and obviously Kung Lao, right? So here's the thing, since it's taking place a thousand years before all of the characters we know and love existed, you have to wonder who will the main villains be? Of course, Sha Shao Kahn existed at that time, Goro, um, Shang Tsung, and I believe Quan Chi. Those four definitely existed. And you have to wonder, will the game sort of revolve around them? Will Shao Kahn create those four villains again? Those villains has caused him so much pain and agony his whole life. Will he create them again? Because he literally has the power to decide who lives and who 
does not live in this new reality. So will he create the villains again? Is the villains necessary to the balance, the existence? That's one thing to think about. Two, if he does not create those villains again, what villains will take its place? Now, I think there's two possibilities in which this will go. You have the first villain being the Titans. Now, I have a screenshot here. This shows, of course, you have uh, Shang Tsung flying up above there. Shang Tsung and, you know, his ending or whatever took over the Time Titans spot. But then you have down here at the bottom, these are uh, what we assume the other Titans look like. Now, this one, I don't know if this is just a helmet of the Titan or what this is, but you have a lady with a crown. You have like some type of like giant evil fish looking creature. And then you have like some space cracking lava squid type of thing. And you have to wonder, what are these other Titans capable of? Is Liu Kang preparing the great Kung Lao to stop this? Or is he helping to defeat Shao Kahn? Another thing I, I, I was thinking about too, the closest thing we have right now to understanding what the other Titans may be is the Infinity Stones of the Marvel Universe. Each Infinity Stone holds a unique aspect of life, of you know the galaxy. You have the mind, reality, power, space, time, and soul. We already seen the Titan of time, that being Kronika, but what if there's a space a, a titan of space, a titan of power, you know, so on and so forth. I think it would be really cool to see what the other titans are capable of, what their powers may be, and really I think what what's, what's the most fascinating thing about the other titans is what their reaction to Kronika's death will be. Because you have to imagine, a titan doesn't die. We barely saw elder gods and we barely seen them die or you know have some sort of uh take some sort of damage so for a titan which is the next step up to die and be replaced you have to think they will feel a little bit more worried about what's happen what's going to happen next so i can see luke kang prepping kung lao to deal with that but I can also see them just, you know, going the safe route and bringing back Shao Kahn and all of them. The second thing that I think would be really cool to address, and this is why I was saying, will Liu Kang bring back Quan Chi and all of these villains who he has problems with? If he doesn't bring them back to life, I think there's more villains lurking in the darkness. If we go back to the tier list that I was doing, in this tier list, now, first off, let me just say, don't pay attention to the side here. The 100%, the A, 50, 50, C, don't pay attention to that. That no longer applies. No longer applies to this discussion. But what's interesting about this, I, the reason why I put Raiko and basically Chaos Realm and Order Realm here, I think that could possibly be the new villains, the new threats, because Will, look at all these crazy evil maniacs that comes with Shao Kahn. If you bring Shao Kahn back, all of these characters will resurface. If they choose to go a different path, let's say order um, and chaos, then you can explore those two realms and all of the crazy things that comes with that. Now, will the Mortal Kombat community like that? Would they like all of these characters being removed all of these characters disappearing and you exploring these two. Me personally, I think that would be really cool if they did that, but I can definitely see how wiping your whole roster and then exploring these two new places would definitely be a gamble, right? I don't know, I think it's a very interesting idea who will be the main villains because there's it, it all leads down several different directions. You have Shao Kahn, which is familiar. This is what would probably make everyone happy. If you bring back Shao Kahn, you could bring back all of these characters who are attached to him. If you bring back, if you dive into the Titan timeline, you can still bring back these characters. But if you go into the Titan timeline, you kind of dig deeper into that well of increasing the, the, the power levels, the, the ceiling, right? What happens when 
Shang Tsung, what happened when Liu Kang kills another Titan? Now he has two Titan powers, right? Is he basically Thanos at that point? Is he basically going around stealing all the Titans powers at that point? The third possibility, you have Order Realm and Chaos Realm, which is which has so much untapped potential. I don't know, that's that's pretty much all I have to say about this. Just my three ideas of where the story can go. Um, I don't know which they will do. It's very tough decision. Shao Kahn's the easiest. The Titan looks like what they're building up to. Um, I think it would be crazy to just drop off the, the Titan storyline is an order and chaos realm it's just a fan favorite of mine that i would love to see explored but let me know down below what you guys think about my theories and my topics in this video i'm very interested to see what you guys think but that's it thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time bye bye